Today, we are going to be uh, ranking every single upgrade in the game. So, a lovely user named Croc made an uh, already generated tier list of all 300 plus upgrades in this tier list maker here. This will take a while, so uh, buckle up. This is going to be a general tier list because uh, I don't want to make 10 different tier lists for every single uh, thing in the game, like chimps, bosses, races, etc. That means I'm going to try my best to generalize the ranking of each tower. I think the ranking will be more geared towards how good is that tower in its niche. So let's just say, for example, let's find the true sun god. I mean, I'm going to put an S tier because its niche is in late game slash bossing and is pretty much king in both those scenarios. On that same vein, of course, VTSG next TSG. That is true, though. I will move it down because I, I guess VTSG is twice as strong. I expect many disagreements out of the 300 upgrade tier. Let's just start, though, in order of what this tier list site is generated. This is bottom path ace. But we can start with the base ace. So it's honestly a really, really good base tower. So one more thing, too, is if it's, like, quote-unquote affordable and viable in other game modes, I need to take that into account. So it would be, I think, S tier in racing. But it's still wildly inaccurate for stuff like chimps or in general, so... I, I give it a solid B. More Pierce isn't really used very much. Again, aside from racing, I'll give it a C. There is good potential with center path, so I'll put it in B tier. I feel like Never Miss only works well with Alk buff. Heavily rely on it. Even then, I think a lot of early game to mid game is outclassed it. So I give it a C. Spectre. I'm going to put this F. Because I don't see it being useful in any any game mode. It might be okay in some game modes, but there's so many things that outclass it. I, I also don't want to leave the F tier completely empty, alright? Not all towers ranked in the same tier are rated the same. Because there's only six of them. I just think you could get, like, much more power out of, uh, $30,000. And uh, lastly, the big play. No memes. I think it, in fairness, gets in it. A or B tier, it's pretty solid in bossing. It's pretty solid late game. I'm gonna have a pineapple in B because I read it on the same scale as the base ace. Good in racing, okay in any other scenario. Let me see how I wanna rank camo upgrades. I think I'll just base it off the upgrade itself because obviously giving camo to any tower would put it pretty well having in here camo. I don't wanna base it on that though. I do think aside from the camo, it doesn't really give anything else other than like. Plus one camo damage. I give it a D. Bomber Ace, I'm gonna give it a C. Because it's only really good in racing. Everything else, I think it's kind of meh. Ground Zero got nerfed. You know what, let's put both of the Ace abilities in the B tier. I think Star is a little bit better than Ground Zero, but they're just okay in my opinion. Rapid Fire Ace, I don't think you ever go wrong with attack speed. B. Same with lots more darts. More darts in general is a an okay upgrade. I think Fighter Plane's okay, but I feel like it's used more as a stepping stone to ODS, which is a better version of the Fighter Plane. So B and C. Alright, finishing off the ace with the Sky Shredder. I'll just put it in B, because I think people who can micro well will probably put in A, but for most of the player base who would just, you know, uses the normal targetings. It does lose its power a little bit. Pretty solid, though. This tier list is also missing Paragon, so let me just drag up the Goliath Doom ship. I... It's a no-brainer. I think it's an S. It is the king of bossing. What more can I say? I think base alchemist is good as a cheap lead popper. Good DOT, too, right? Sheesh. Okay, I'm gonna stick everything in B tier, I guess. What can I say? A lot of towers are, like... Slightly above average. I think as a cross path, Fast Throwing is also considered B tier. Okay, luckily the next one is not a B tier. This definitely belongs in F. Nobody in the might mind would use ass pools. Let's go is good, but I, I don't really see it used too often, just because there's not a whole lot of leads in general. Therefore, I'm gonna put C. Rubber to gold, I'm giving A, because if we're considering boss strategies, uh, I do see the rubber to gold trap combo being used a hell of a lot. This one is going to be controversial, but I think BMA deserves a low ranking. 
Again, guys, it's a kill stealer. I don't think it truly helps to hold out late game. Yeah, I'm gonna throw in D tier. Now for middle path, I think Stronger Acid deserves a C. Perishing Potions, I'll throw in B. It's actually used as like cross bathing for 320420. I think Concoction, I'm gonna drop it down to C. It's been nerfed a good amount. It's still solid, don't, don't get me wrong. I will put it in the middle pack, but there is no uh, tier for the middle pack. Unless I make one, but nah. Cookie Monster, I think also gets a place next to BMA. Even with the buffs, it's still, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's still not like a good scenario to truly use it unless you're doing a meme run. This one's hard to rank because of all the bugs associated with it. Like the fact that it makes some towers incredibly OP would give it S, but... If we're not including bugs, which I think it's fair to not include... B? Baker Globs is an okay upgrade, but it's just used as a stepping stone for the most part. Acidic Mixture Dip is pretty solid, but still most of the time use a stepping stone. And I think these are no-brainers. I'm glad I can get through them quickly. As for those two, I'd give A for Perm Brew, because uh, just because it's not the best option in Chimps. It's obviously S in free play. Other than the price, the uh, uh, power it gives to towers is very solid. And now I move on to bombs. I think 000 bomb fills the same niche as uh, the alchemist. It pops leads for cheap. In fact, I'm actually going to move the ranking. These two are on the same level because they cost about the same. I know range is good and all, but that's really all it gives. I, I give it a D. Frag bombs also is kind of not that good. D. Cluster Bomb is very good in racing, but in every other game mode, there's not enough balloons to make it worthwhile. C. Recursive got nerfed a lot. Also C. Bomb Blitz with all its buffs, I, st I also think is a D. The only thing stopping me from F is, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think it's, I think it's a step above F. I guess these two attack speed upgrades would both be B tier, considering the faster shooting of Ace along in the same tier. Uh, Mauler. A couple updates ago, I would have put this in A, but they nerfed it so hard. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a C. It's probably still a solid strategy, but I think it's now kind of like middle of the pack. Same with this, this, and Element C, even after the buff? I think so. It was a fun buff, but that that's all. 100 and 200 bomb get the cross path benefit because of 203 and 204 bomb. But really big bombs, uh, I'm gonna still leave it in D tier. Despite, you know, all the buffs they gave to it. Blue impact because of their stunning, I think deserves uh, maybe a C. Balloon Crush is pretty good, I think. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna give it an A tier. It's it's honestly one of the best dollars out there, especially with the knockback now. Very, very good if you can afford it. So yeah, Balloon Crush up there as the only uh, a tier bomb. Base Boomerang is an okay tower. Three pierce and one damage. But I think it's a C. Long range again is just there to give range. Nothing special to it. Uh, this is... I give it a B for this one. Good cross binding benefit. Double damage with the ranks too and lead popping. I think Kylie gets a C tier. A very solid C tier. I don't really use it for a whole lot but it's... Good at popping balloons. Uh, more press. I still think belongs in A tier. As an A tier staller. I'll admit I don't really use Mob Doll much, but I'm gonna give it a solid C. It's still pretty expensive. That's the main uh, main reasoning. Now for a middle path. Again, you can't go wrong with faster throwing, so these all go in the B. Bio Boomer as a tower, I think deserves a C. Uh, Turbocharge is much better with that ability that I think gives it insane amounts of potential. B. I give Turbocharge a solid B. I might skip some exclamations on some of these because there's just so much and I'm kind of tired to like explain every little detail, but just know it's solid. I think 100 and 200 Boomer get like. Yeah, C. Let me just say it's much closer, like to be than any of the other ones because it's similar to the cross-pathing of the middle path. 
Crossbinding at the top path is also really good. Ricochet? I think definitely D. It's only good in racing, and even then, it's mostly used as stepping stone to more glaives, which I think only gets a C ranking because of racing. Honestly, racing is a very small part of this game. I'm gonna stick it in D. Besides, not even the best race tower out there, although, don't get me wrong, it's probably solid A in racing. Now, uh, I'm delighted to say Glaive Lord still belongs in F tier. I say because they buffed the Glaive Dominus a lot recently. A. Yes, don't forget too, the 10% farm rebuff can be uh, somewhat useful. Next up, Boat. Now, I give Base Boat a D because uh, it's very hard for you to maximize the pierce of it. Because they don't seek and uh, you don't even get both sides most of the time. Same with the long range. And the Crow's Nest. Yeah, they're all just kind of there and they're not really good as a cross path to uh, most towers. Merchant Man. I mean, it's below average efficiency, so I gotta give it a C. I think Flavor Trades has to go up here because they actually sell back. It's like a must when you do boss runs or you're trying to optimize in getting money. Train Empire is a good strategy, so I would stick it in B tier, I think. Oh, Grape Shot is lovely, in my opinion. I'm gonna give it an A. Good upgrade. Solomon Projectiles allow us for a easy early game. Turning them hot shots is good, but they can't pop purple. So I stick it in the mid tier. Cannon Ship, I'm also gonna stick in C tier. Just cause uh, there's usually not enough balloons to maximize Pierce. Now, Monkey Bar does some pretty solid damage now. I'm personally gonna give it a solid B. I do want to say uh, Pirate Lord is still A tier, even after uh, the slight nerf. On that same vein, maybe I'd move this up here, but I think it's just a tad weaker. So that's my ranking for Middle Boat. Now, top half. I mean, with these being the uh, correct cross pathing for the boats in general, well, B. Destroyer is actually really good, really, really good mid game, still. Especially with out buff. So therefore, I give it A. Uh, aircraft Carrier, I think, gets a pretty big knock. You know what? I might go so far to say it is D. Because uh, I don't think a lot of people stop at Aircraft Carrier. They go for Flagship if they want to get it. Flagship, I'd say C tier. It's pretty mid in damage. Navark are the Cs. Uh, oh, for late game, for sure S tier. But because we're also counting uh, the other niche in bossing, which is only it's only okay with... I'm gonna say A. Ace was S because it's it was good in a bossing and late game. Guys, the 000 Dharma Key is the best car of all time. Okay, in fairness, A tier. It's still like the only one of the only options to survive like hard chimps runs at the start. One of the best base towers in the game. I think the range upgrades get a D. Because again, not good when being cross path on that same vein. I'll just rank the uh, Attack speed upgrades at B. Both crossbows, I think, are a solid C. And then crossbow master. I'm gonna throw it in the D tier. It's not completely worthless, but it is just outclassed in, well, all of its niches, of which there are none. Probably another controversial one among the casual players. Triple dart? I seldom use this. I'm just gonna say D, because I, I feel like I don't, I don't, I don't really see any use in the triple dart that the crossbow usually can't take care of itself. Fan Club, I give it a C, just because it's decent single target when you max them all. Class Fan Club, a uh, solid B. Pretty much an upgraded version of the Fan Club, albeit kind of pricey. Now for the Pierce upgrades on the uh, darts, I want to also say, uh, yeah, these cross pathing things get the same as bottom path. Spike Apolt, also, I think belongs in D tier. It's only redeeming factor is racing, but I think racing only gets a small weighting when it comes to these. Juggernaut, same thing, right? Yeah, I think I think Juggernaut in the same vein over there. You jug too, screw it. All top path of the D tier would be moved several tiers higher if it was, uh, you know, if the only maps that existed were were Hedge, seventy times, but that doesn't count. And then the Dark Paragon. I think because it's cheap. It can't possibly be too low, but it is the weakest Paragon. 
I'm going to say B. It still needs the right map for it to perform really, really, really well. Now for Druid, I think it's a it's a solid base tower. So B for base. Longer range, uh, uh D. I think Heart of Vengeance is the preferred cross path for uh, several, at least the top path. So I give it a B with long range and D. Uh, the Druid of Wrath, also B. I think Avatar of Wrath has got to go with A, right? Just one, one of the best single target boss damage out there. Solid late game too. Just okay and chips, which is why it's not, you know, in S. I know you need Populus, like, for Avatar of Wrath to do something, but as an upgrade itself, I don't know. Consider Populus pretty close to Avatar Wrath, even though they're in different tiers. Now, Middle Path, the fact that it gets you more Thorns for more single target is good, and I think it deserves a solid B. The D Rico Factor, I think, is... Uh, it's only used as a stepping stone into the uh, Jungle of the Druid. It's, it's okay for that niche. I think I'm going to put the 030 Druid in an S tier. Just because it's so good in, on, like, pretty much any map you put it on. Maybe aside from, like, maps with, like, five lands. But for it being the king of early game, I think it deserves that ranking. On the same vein, Jungle's Bounty is also really, really good now. But I think I'm going to leave it in A. Just because, uh, as a farming option, it's not the best still. But it's still uh, pretty solid at holding its ground. Spear of the Forced is good. B. This druid allows you to get lead popping, so uh, B and extra pierce on the base druid. So lightning, no, I, I don't use this much. I wouldn't dare say completely useless though. Druid of the storm is okay at blowing things back, right? It's come a long way. Ball lightning, I, I still think needs work. A lot of work. D. Yeah, I, I agree that Superstorm is a, a, a more expensive Bloom Crush. That does the same job, because Crush knocks back things now, so... Uh, C tier. Engineer, as a base tower... I don't know, I don't I don't think it's very good. D. Oversized Nails also D, just because... I feel like the pierce of the Oversized Nails for the price. I don't know, this one's Pin, which I think is pretty solid. So B. Double Gun is okay and all, but... Like, it's it, it doesn't last a whole long time. Like, as an early game tower. Hence the C rating. Now, Balloon Trap here. I think it, it's got to go in S. It's top tier farming option. No doubt about that. The Big Trap is not really used for farming much, though. It's also pretty niche, isn't it? Trap and C tier. Uh, This is just range, right? Because this is the preferred cross path. Like, 014. I think it gets bumped up to C because of that. Deconstruction. I think might as well fall in the same vein. Yeah, with it being a decent cross path for, like, the Century Champion and all. I have a hard time choosing between C and D for the Cleansing Foam. I think I'll do C uh, Overclock. Uh, A tier, right? On a second thought, it's useful in every single game mode. So, uh, I'm gonna give it an S. Maybe a, a, an in-between S and A. As with the Ultra Boost, I know Ultra Boost isn't very good in chips, but... It is very, very, very good while well, bossing, late game, you name it. Uh, now for the top path, Sentry. I don't see Sentries being used, like, at all for anything, really, so... And there's not really much cross-pathing to be had with these things, so... I'm gonna give it a D. Same with Sprockets, I guess. I give Sexpert a C, and then also Sentry Champion a C. It's very good when given a lot of buffs, but it takes so much to... Get it up to that point that I think it gets knocked down a bit because of that. All right, now for the Engineer Paragon. Rank bossing, S. But every other game mode, uh, it's got to be knocked down. I don't know. When I tested the one NG, it, it was an awful late game. So uh, I'm still going to keep it in the C tier or B tier. All right. I think just because of inefficiency, base farm gets a C. Although I think every farm is like useful in some capacity. Actually, easy click. Come on, guys. You're not that lazy. I think this generally belongs to F because it does nothing for your bananas if you're attentive enough. And even if you did go bottom path, you would at least get banana salvage, which is... I think it deserves an A. Extra sellback makes it an epic cross path. 
Yeah, I don't know if I want to say S though, just because five two zero farms exist. I think bottom path farms are mostly for the lazy because the top paths are more efficient. But they are good again in bosses because you can use them to sell. I'm just, just I'm just gonna throw them all in the uh, the B tier though. Now I think Long Life also joins Easy Collect in the. Uh, come on, don't be lazy, or just get a farmer if you're that lazy. So F you go. This being a solid cross path gets a B in my opinion. Okay, I don't know how much this is a part of me just uh, starting to be lazy, but I'm placing every middle path farm in B tier. Because they're all solid. Banks give you income, efficient income if you wait. IMF gets bigger capacity and loans and depositing, and then this gives you a fat 10k. So yes, B for bank, as they say. I say 100 in B, 200 is even better, right? So A. And then 320 goes back down to B, because it's like, I don't know, people don't stop there very often. But they definitely go for the BRF, which is A. And then B Central. Do we put it in S? Because it's by far the best, like, the most efficient form when you 10x Ultra Boost it and buffs all your BRFs. I think S, yes. Now we have the Glue Gunner. I think as a base, it doesn't do any damage. It doesn't even glue that well either. One balloon at a time. I think we gotta fill up that F tier. By the way, we're not counting the fact that it's free. Otherwise, Dart Monkey would be S. Even then... How often are you going to go for a free glue over a free dart monkey, am I right? This makes glue last longer, and just because of the quote-unquote cross-pathing sometimes you want on it, I give it a D. And then, the second tier though, I'd give a B, because it makes balloons even slower. A top being the cross-path that you want to get up to fully. I'm so tempted to put mob glue in S tier, but I think I'm going to opt to put it in Relentless. Both in the A. Alright, we're gonna zoom out a little bit now. I think Super gets, gets Pierce Cap too much. Even though the stunning is very nice. So therefore, C. Uh, you can never go wrong with bigger globs. More Pierce on the stuff. Glue Splatter, I think, deserves a C. Because sometimes it's worse to get Splatter. Compared to, uh, you know, the... Just the, the Splat. Glue Hose is nothing special either. It only wants to get to Glue Strike. Where I think... Uh, I think it deserves... Uh, both, uh, both A? Yeah, I think the plus two is uh, too much to give up. So, yes. Glue soak? I think 100 and 200 glue C. Just because people don't really stop at that very much. Balloon dissolver? I think dissolver and liquid fire both have to be pretty down. Pretty down there. Nobody stops at these upgrades unless you're going to be solver, in which case, I think solver is like smack dab in the middle. It could, be, it could go either way. I give it a B. Base Alley is pretty good. It's just kind of expensive. So on that note, smack dab in the middle. But I'll just throw it in B just because. Now for the... This one's faster darts, right? Oh boy. Yep. You belong right there. Fast Fire belongs right up there. Because it is the preferred cross path. Mob Shove is... Uh, it's okay for, for mid game. But I feel like once you get to late game, you're better off getting like, well, a Mob Blue or something like that. Now for the Comanche, I think it's solid B. Above average. Maybe even A, but I think I'm just gonna stick to that B ranking. Comanche is a little bit lower because it's still too... E it's pretty expensive for what it provides and it not being able to be buffed very well. This one's bigger jets. I think I'm just gonna put both of these in the uh, D tier because they don't... They don't provide a whole lot. Like, just plan better. Don't turn on auto start and uh, you won't need to move your helis, or require your helis to move at lightning speed in my eye mode. Downdraft got nerfed a little bit, so I think it would have been A tier before. Now it's just a B, I think. I don't know if I see, like, Chinook and Marine being good enough to be moved up to A. Like, just because they're really good in bossing. Other than that, good, but yeah. I'll keep it at above average. Now, Quad Darts... I think also deserves above average. Pursuit again. Like, I personally will will rank all, like, lazy upgrades uh, as uh, pretty low. All you have to do is be basic at Heli Micro to be able to perform better than Pursuit sometimes. Uh, Razor Rotors and Apache, I think, I think get a low ranking. 
like Apache is very similar to Spectre in that it can't pop DT is it's very expensive as a mid game and it's just there as a stepping stone to the tier five. In which case, I think Apache Prime. Uh, I feel like it's fallen off because it hasn't really gotten many buffs lately. So just a middle pack C. I'm looking at the Bonafide Ice Towers. Base Ice is kind of it's kind of just there now, mainly for racing. And the Bond Cross Path is actually the less preferred one. So therefore, I'm going to put both 011 or 001 and 002 in D. I feel like Cryo Cannon and Icicles can both be in C. Actually, I feel like Icicles, like, whoever goes Icicles to, to do damage, because there's plenty of other towers that do that, right? I'll stick you in D. Stick you in the D. Uh, Impale, I think it's a better super glue. But I don't know if that's enough to put me uh, put it in the uh, B tier, because, like, you know, the mid problem, it hitting leads, uh, sacrificing attack speed because of that. Attack speed gets a solid B. Deep freeze, I feel like it actually benefits your ice shards a good amount, if you didn't know. Outside of that, I think I'd average out to a C. Arctic wind, it's good at creating ice platforms. I think uh, a lot of people would spend the extra couple thousand on a snowstorm. Or even Absolute Zero, which is, I think, a very, very good stall. So I'm putting them in a solid B. For Top Path being the preferred cross pathing, I think both of them get an A. Or, sorry, B. Uh, Ice Shards, good in racing. And I think just because of racing, I'm gonna throw it in a B. I know I mentioned earlier again, I'm ranking it based on their niche. But I also have to take into account that they're affordable in so many other game modes. So I can't give this S just because that one very small part of the game. Now, Embrittlement, I think, gets up, goes up there in the A because of the plus one damage, so it's useful then more in more than just racing. Okay, I shards in C because I put the recursives in C. And they're also race towers. Super brittle. Uh, Yeah, I'd say A. Good bossing. Good free play. Not always used in chimps, but good. Do I dare place base mortar on the same level as the base start monkey? You know what? I think with it doing two damage, yes. Increase accuracy. Personally, I think you can get away with out it. Although it's still uh, good, don't get me wrong. But see, uh, Bernie stuff, I think gets me a solid B. Right, that and the cross pathing benefit for the Bernie stuff. Solid, solid. Uh, signal Flare is an okay D camo now because it works on DTs. So B, uh, Shattering Shells. I think it's worth a solid B. Uh, just for the purpose of, you know, being still very good against that around 98. Loon Cineration? I don't think it's still all that strong. So just below average at C. Okay, I don't need to explain why both attack speeds go in B. I think Heavy Shells might also go in B. Because that also gives you attack speed now. Funnily enough. Artillery Battery? Is it good enough to be put in A? You know what? Sure, I'll put both this and pop it on A. Just because of that 39 buff. They juice both those towers up to, like, 100. Now for the top path boomerangs, uh, or sorry, mortars. I think the extra pierce gets a C, only bumped up because of racing. Balloon Buster is now only 50% more damage on your base mortar compared to 100 before, so... Then knock it down a, a tad bit. I want to say the stunning of the Shell Shock gets a B tier. Big one, I'm going to knock it down to C. Just because, again, people don't really stop there. And it's only niche is uh, in racing. I guess one might also go in C. I think it's fallen off a bit, hasn't it? Base Ninja. I think for it being, uh, well, the only one that hits camo. Minus factory. B. And I want to say Seeking Shur Shuriken gets an A. Because it's so helpful as a cross path for, for the Jitsu, right? You pretty much can't go without it, is what I'm saying. Cow Chops? is okay. Flash Bomb is not okay. <laughs> sticky Bomb is pretty solid. The only problem is for Sticky, though, it's only good for bosses. For, like, chimps and other than that, that, not really. Actually, you know what? Even after the buff, I'm gonna knock down the Flash Bomb to, to F. You, you're right. I, I don't... No one ever really stops there. I think Mass Bomb gets a B. D for Distraction. I think so. Just because if you want to get knocked back, you probably wouldn't only stop at this upgrade. Like, that's just a benefit of having the uh, path in the first place. I want to say same with counter-espionage, because, like, I'm, I'm thinking of it from a decamel perspective. 
almost nobody ever uses this as decamo, although it's a it's just like an okay benefit from it. I feel like due to the sheer power alone, a Shinobi should get a pretty high ranking. Cause it goes hard when 20 stacked, right? I think in the same vein, Sable being the all useful stalling option, slowdown option. Hey, Grand Sabo biggest greatness is the epic late game, but for champs other than that, it's just a little bit above average. Okay, trust me, I'm, I'm not incredibly lazy on this one, but I think all top path ninjas get to be maybe Jitsu a little higher because of the ninja out, like the tier 4 ninja out combo, but that's not the best thing ever anymore, in my opinion. So I think I, I'll keep that ranking. And now for the Ascended Shadow. I think Ascended Shadow gets an A for sure. Yes, slowing down pretty much everything permanently. Good single target with the, with the flash bomb. What can I say? Solid Paragon, solid Paragon. I want to say 000 Sniper is just as important as the 000 Dark Monkey in Chimps mode. So, A I guess. By virtue of these being attack speed, I give them B. Semi-auto though is when the cross thing doesn't matter anymore, and I think I honestly might say D. Full auto does get extra mob damage, so I'll bump it up a little bit to see. And then Elite Defender, with it being good, I guess, against bossing, should get bumped up to uh, a solid B. Camo is the preferred cross path sometimes for, uh, well, a boss like FaZe. And the extra camo damage, so I, I don't think... I think B is solid for that. I guess because of cross pathing, Shrapnel also B. B for bouncing bullet anybody? I think so. I think su Supply Drop's slight inefficiency gets it still a B, although still good farming. But yes, with this buffing every single sniper, and being good, chimps, bossing, or, well, bossing? I'm not sure. Yeah, just in general. Definitely deserves A tier, a -tier for me. I think one zero zero sniper should also belong in the A tier. Because it is just, well, good for the early leads on, like, round 28, round 30. Very, very, very good early game for very, very, very cheap. Large Cowboy, though, is where we started, uh... I'm not sure. Not really stopping it that much, aside from cross pathing. Same applies to Deadly Precision. I think May Moba is when we start go putting it in A tier. Because there's a funny trick you can do with bossing, where you can stall the round so that you only deal with the boss and you don't die to the uh, normal AI balloons. That on top of it being good. Well, stalling in general. Yeah, hey, same with Grim Moab. Grim Moab. Anything that gives plus damage to a, a, a balloon belongs in the same tier as Super Brittle and Glue Storm. I think Base Factory is one of the ones that are solid. I think you also want to put 001 and 002 in the B tier because this is a, a well, a good cross path. It doubles the lifespan of your spikes. Oh hey, a tower, a tower next that we can put in the F tier. I generally believe long life spikes is there's there's no, there's never a use for it unless you're playing a specific challenge. It, it just is not good. It doesn't make your spikes any stronger. Just makes it last one more round and just a little bit more time. Deadly Spike deserves a D. I think Perma gets a B because it's been it's been knocked down a bit with all those nerfs. Still solid, but not as OP as it once was. Faster shooting upgrades, I think, are an automatic B. I guess I'll put Mop Shutter there too. Spike Storm is where we. Uh, I, I'm I'm arguably thinking about putting an S tier because of the insane buff. I think maybe multi lane maps where the uh, smart target doesn't work properly, like I don't know erosion, knock it down to the A. Same with Carpenter Spikes. But trust me, I think it's kind of on the fence. Definitely up there in the A tier. That is for sure. Bigger stacks. I mean, doubles the the, the, the point power of your Spike Factory. Yeah, I personally believe that that belongs in A. Uh, White Hot, though. Again, this is a downgrade, like, a lot of the time. You can easily fill in the lead popping with an Alchemist or a mid, but I guess if you have no choice, then I'll spare it for from the F tier. I think I'm okay with Spike Mines and Spike Balls being B tier now. I, and I, I want to say, because your Mines is so good in bossing, really good at least tiers and also really good late game. I mean, yeah, I, I have to say S. It's it's the strongest non, non Super Monkey Tower, non Paragon. Okay, base up definitely belongs there with base Dark Monkey and base Sniper. Because of that early game champs on that same vein. I think Twin Guns has to be up there. 
Actually, I think I want to put Twin Guns a little bit lower, just because it's slightly less efficient than getting another 0, zero, zero sub. So it's more as a stepping stone to error, which is A tier for sure. Triple Guns, I think, is where we uh, put it back down to B. Same with the AP Darts. And Sub Commander... I feel the strategy's kind of fallen off lately. So, C. C for the Commander, as you know it. Barb Darts is, a, is an okay upgrade. Getting more Pierce. I feel like Heath Tipped only giving you lead popping should put it on the same tier as the uh, White Hot. Now for Ballistic, I think it's C. First Strike is an easy A. Great in Rake Bossing, like the best round 100 free win. Preemptive, I think, is uh, right in the middle of the pack. So there we have it. Not much going for longer range sub, I don't think. Intel, easy A. Easy A. I feel like easy A also for the D camo sub. It's pretty much one of the best D camos out there. Even though they nerfed it. Like it has a pierce limit now, but you're only going to hit that pierce limit in racing. So I don't think it's a big deal. I'm torn between reactor and energizer A, B. Just know that it's on the fence for both of these. I just knocked down energizer a little bit. Just because it's not always 100% like the next best option in a boss. Although of course S tier for late game for sure. I feel like the base Super Monkey is too expensive to be anything higher than a C tier. I think Knockback deserves A. It's really, really good. It's an amazing cross path for either a top path or middle path. Ultra Vision, I guess, is just kind of there. Plus one camo damage is, again, also just kind of there. Batman is solid. B for Batman. Dark Champion, I think, is also solid. We're going to rank Legend of Night not based on chimps because it's not affordable, but based on free play and bossing. I think it's an easy A. Or S. No, I think I got I got to put an S for that, you know, that portal. <laughs> you can't get any better than that for late game. Okay, now we have uh, the range upgrades. I think the, the, the Super Monkey upgrades here should be an A, the range ones. Because you, you pretty much always want them in Temple. And it gives you good pierce on uh, whatever you're going to cross path it with. So either, again, Sun Avatar or hell, even a Dumb Knight. Solid. Solid A. You know what? I think all of Middle Path Super Monkey gets an A. They're all really good for what they do, I feel like. Like, Robo is great with Jerry, uh, Tech Tier, Nuke stuff. Anti Blue Nuke stuff, but even more so. Now, now we have another uh, Super Monkey that can join the gang. Again, 5 second exclamation. Laser loses you purple popping. And all it gets is Pierce, which Range already gets. Although Plasma being the preferred cross path, now shall get bumped up to an A, or sorry, a B. I think Sun Avatar is also worth a B. Actually, no, because of rank, I think rank bossing, it scaling really well with damage givers. I'm gonna say A. And then I think the Temple is also very much deserving an A, because it can make stuff a lot cheaper for your boss runs or in general. Plus, the, the, the max tier 4 Temple is no slouch with the mini Sun Avatars. I say the base tack is good, but not great, because of the limited range. And then these two bottom path tacks being... There for the cross path for Maelstrom and Ring of Fire. Solid B. Tax Breaker B also for the Stepping Stone. I think Overdrive and Tax Stone get upgraded to A. For excelling insanely against bossing. Even though, I guess in other game modes, they may not be as amazing. But it's probably a pretty low A. Yeah, not, not all A's and B's are the same. Okay, the tier 1 range upgrade is definitely, I think, a D tier. However, with tier 2 getting plus 1 pierce, I think uh, makes this one, even though it's also range upgrade, a B tier. Blade Shooter is only really good in racing. You have the game mode, pretty mid. Actually, no, these are only good in racing. Now that I think about it again, I, I, I usually ranked every good race tower in the C tier, just because they were not good at anything else. I think all three of these belong perfectly mid. I'll put the attack speed upgrades of the attacks as B for cross pathing. Hot shots is okay, at least from what I've seen. Ring of Fire, I think if it was pre-nerf, B for being even better on racing. But now it's kind of up there, not being the best, so C. And honestly, same with Inferno Ring, C. The base village only giving range is not that useful, but I don't think... I don't know if it deserves a D tier. 
But I guess with it only giving range, and range not being the end-all be-all of everything, I will just put it as a, as a D. Yeah, $1,000 for that is quite a bit. Now, based on how I always talk about discounting in, like, videos and all that, uh, does that, does that, is that fair? Definitely A at least. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I truly believe in the S. You know what, I'm keeping an S. Alright. And then Monkey Town, I think, deserves A. It's, it's pretty much the best farming option, because you make so much money, like, just popping balloons itself that it'll pay itself, itself off, like, really quickly. If you get it early enough. Monkey City, because it increases the potency of any farm, including the Banana Central. A. And I might dare still put Monkey Opus in S tier. Because the Zero Farm Monkey Opus is still really good. It's still the meta when it comes to making money, so. Yeah. Pairs along with the Bloom Trap. I think Rigor Blocker is cheap enough of an upgrade that it doesn't cost you uh, too much, even though it doesn't provide you a whole lot. <laughs> Other than, again, Rego popping, or Rego stopping for like too many pops challenges, but yeah, yeah, see for sure. Uh, Raider Scanner, permanent camo for 2k, easy A. It might be, I might also put A, but I think I'm gonna knock it down just a tad bit just because because you can substitute a mid for uh, other things like Alchemist on certain towers. Call to Arms is also worth a B because uh, it's much weaker than Homeland, which. I mean, for its niche, S, right? Epic late game, bossing. May not be it when it comes to chimps, but I think those, it being so good in those two niches, should keep it an S. All the bigger radius provides is bigger radius of itself, so C. Jungle Drums also. Village is the most amount of S tiers, I've noticed. But I guess that's kind of how it goes when it's a really good utility tower. Uh, primary training is not always useful, hence why... It is worth a B. I think same with the uh, this thingy. And uh, I might knock the expertise down just because it's really expensive. Yeah, price being the main concern there. Now for the wizards. Base wizard is really, really bad. I'm putting in D. 001 is much better. Especially when you get to cross pathing it with like Arkham Rage, for example. Monkey Sense giving camo. Uh, and I guess range deserves a C. Shimmer is also just kind of average as a D camo. See ya. Necromancer, I feel like, is a solid mid game. So I think I'll just sneak it in the B, but no, I, I view it as like middle of the pack. Same with the Prince of Darkness. I think it's like perfectly in the middle of the, in, of the pack. Fireball is only used as a stepping stone to wall fire, so I'm gonna put it in a D. Now, if this was battles too, th th this would definitely be like a an A or an S. Wallfire, they did hit, pr hit pretty hard, but I think I will still rate it a B. Now, is Dragon's Breath still a very good mid-game option? I think it still is. Even with the nerf, so in that case, just on the edge of A to B. Easy way to get through early and mid is why it's up there. Phoenix being uh, nerfed as well, puts it down a bit. And then Wizard Phoenix, I think it's just still too expensive. So, see ya. Even though it's pretty, pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna put the 100 wizard for uh, B tier because of the seeking aspects. For 200, C. Same with the Arcane Mastery because they're still really only used as stepping stone upgrades. Hell, uh, I think I'm even gonna put... I might just put all top path wizards here in C. Or at least tier 2 to 5. They're all just kind of mid compared to uh, everything else in this game now. Okay, and for the Magus... I think B tier, only because for its price, it's not as good as it could be. Or at least the main problem is the cooldown for the Metamorphosis. It, it's really, really good with the Metamorphosis, but yeah, I feel like that's that's about it. It's it's one of the Paragons of all time, that's for sure. I feel like base darling with it having global range deserves a B, even if it's inaccurate and has a very, very low pierce. Faster Swivel, I think. Genuinely, I think F. Based on my experience, like, non bottom path darlings already swivel well enough, so. What good is that really? Powerful Darts is okay. I think it's too expensive for early game defense, so C. And no cross pathing benefit from it. Same with the Buckshot. It shoots too slow for it to be really that good, but I think Bad Tier should go up. 
You know what? I view on the same on the same vein as the uh, Dragon's Breath. It's an amazing save up tower on Chimps mode. So I believe it deserves A. I think the Bez deserves a B. Expensive, and you pretty much get exactly the power that you expect from it. That's the very definition of middle of the road. For 010, only giving camo, C tier. Faster shooting is uh, definitely the preferred cross path for like Ray of Doom, so I'm gonna give it a B. And the more I think about it, the more I think Hydro Rocket deserves a D. Because uh, it's got no really strength in a certain game mode or anything. It's outclassed by a lot of things. Rocket Storm, I think, gets bumped a little bit just because of the ability. You can stun with Monkey Knowledge, it's pretty decent. Mad. I think it's the same. It falls in the same vein as Super Minds in that its niche in late game and bossing outweighs. Uh, it being go it being not as great in other game modes. Although in that case, I guess Avatar Wrath should be up here, right? Or nah. I think under that same exclamation, Mad and Avatar Wrath should be in the same tier, so think of it as high A for both of these. I don't think they're as close to a must as a Super Minds is in regards to those things. Focus firing is good. That is all. Laser shock is good. It's the best cross path now. And I don't think this should be controversial at all, but I think laser cannon. Oh my god, I want to put an F. You know what, I'm putting an F because we lose the Pearl Bobbing. Similar to Laser Blast, it just ain't good. Plasma Accelerate is good. I almost want to put an A tier because of the bossing, but I think it's just kind of on the fence. Okay, and I think Ray of Doom should uh, follow the same rationale as the Mad. That is all. Alright, and Beast. So it actually does attack at base, but it's pretty bad. It is cheap, though, so I think I might put it in C. Jer Falcon is good at stalling, I guess, similar to... Uh, I don't know how people used Chinook in, in Chimps back in the day. So I'm gonna give the Tier 1 bird a B. I feel from my experience, all the birds are uh, pretty solid. All in solid B, I think. Although I think Pokai should make it up a bit. Because of, it, you know, only spawning one child. It relieves so much density out of late rounds. So that's got to count for something, right? Okay, this might just be me, but I'm pretty sure Microraptor, from my experience, just doesn't do anything. It's pretty rough. So I give it a D. I've used Atosaurus a few times to know it's pretty solid, so B. They got hit hit hard a little bit, so I'm, that's why I'm also going to put V-Raptor in the B. Yeah, all solidly above average now? I think so. I think so. I think from my experience also, Prana isn't really that good. Good. So into B you go. Uh, Barracuda, I think, also deserves a, a C. I don't think Great White and Barracuda are too great anymore, but from what I remember when I last used Orca, it's still pretty strong on one max merge, so I think that alone buffs it to the B tier. And Megalodon, that's still bad, right? I think so. So D tier. Now for the final stretch, guys, the heroes. I think Quincy deserves a. Just a solid B. I think same with Gwendolyn and Striker Jones. Striker Jones, I think, should vary based on how good the mortars or bombs are. If they're good, he'll be used more. Since its mortars are good. B. Alright, and apparently Oban is the worst hero in Chimp still. I don't think that's enough to knock him down to D, but I think I'll leave it in C. Just because, you know, in non-chimps, his Watchery still makes a little bit of money. Can still be useful in some in some aspects. Azili is the king of late game because of the Hex. So that's deserving of C, even though there are other scenarios, right? Oh, sorry, S. I guess if you compare it to the Super Mines, which again, I reasoned is good in two scenarios, Azili is only good in one. Okay, drop her down to A. Not only that, but I guess Adora like, holds a candle because of the, uh, the buffing to the True Sun God. Double damage, double attack speed. Because of that, I think Adora... A for Adora. Uh, Sada needs no explanation. Okay, I did say no more memes. Benjamin... Oh, he's... He's as if not for chimps. But I guess because of not chimps... And I guess Geraldo, like... Again, is a competitor. Competitor to... Uh, the money-making, quote-unquote. In bossing. He's not unanimously... The one to choose for a boss. So, A. And I think since Geraldo is... Uh, what you want in, like... Almost every, like, game mode, or most game modes. Boss, late game, 
Even chimps? I think I gotta put him here even after all the nerfs. Churchill is a good, solid B. I think it's also gonna be a B for Brickle. I know she's apparently really good in chimps with a Mega Mine, but yeah, outside of that, not too much other other specialties. All right, and Sai. I think a lot of heroes here are just gonna be in the the B tier. They're all solidly above average. Minus Oban. Do Pan Etienne do anything deserving of going up to A tier? Personally, I don't think so. So I think that's gonna do it. I have officially ranked every single hero and upgrade in the game, and it took me two and a half hours. Here is the final list. Let me slowly slow da scroll down so you can see what every tower is ranked on this list. So note that if I did have to, uh, if I looked over and re-ranked everything, I think we'd probably shift stuff, but it won't be by too much, so this will be my final ranking. Again, with there being so many upgrades, uh, I expect many disagreements, so uh, yeah. Please don't flame me too hard for uh, if I rank something that is too low for your liking or too high for your liking. Now, one last thing here if you like stats. One of my mods made a very basic overall ranking for all the towers, where F gets 0 points all the way up to S with 5 points. And I guess from that, it seems like I value a super and village quite a lot. And dart heli bomb, not so much. Again, this is a very basic ranking. I think, I guess you could also weight it. So maybe tier 1s, 2s are not worth as much as tier 5s, but I think this gives you a general idea of where I stand with it, but just take it with a grain of salt. Anyways, that's it. Click here if you want to see more tier lists that I've done before. See ya.